Hi, this is John Clements. Welcome to the UMass Video Fruit Advisor. Uh, today is Monday, January 31st, 2011, the last day of January. We're here at the UMass Cold Spring Orchard in Belchertown, Massachusetts, and I'm going to continue my tall spindle pruning series. This is take three. Uh, this is a group of Honeycrisp on uh, Bud 9 rootstock planted in 2006. So these have cropped very well. Bud 9 is a precocious rootstock. These trees are planted about three feet apart and trained to the tall spindle system. So let's talk about the uh, three steps of pruning tall spindle. The first step being removing one or two of the biggest branch branches in each tree and uh, here we have a honeycrisp tree and I'm going to go right for at least the very biggest branch right off the, the, the bat here using a bevel cut to get some new growth. Now there's one. Um, typically like I said I like to remove two. Uh, this branch is kind of low despite the snow depth so we'll take that one off. Now the other thing, the second rule is we want to, uh, if, if necessary, uh, singularize these branches a little bit. Uh, make sure there's only one axis coming out. These honeycrisp aren't too bad. Here's one here. Um, I look for Y's in these branches. This one's a nice straight one here, so that one's fine. And then finally, the other thing we do is I typically like to, here's a Y, singularize, singularize the top. These trees are not even reached the top wire yet, so they're not too tall. I don't have to worry about cutting them back yet. Now the other thing on these Honeycrisp, um, you know, has a tendency to be a biennial bearer. And we picked this, trip up, this tip up in Nova Scotia, but those guys up there do a lot of what we kind of call spur pruning. And they kind of go through and remove about half the spurs on the tree, um, usually the lower spurs, just to uh, reduce the crop load somewhat. This one's not too bad here, but uh, to get rid of some of the crop on these trees, and this will help it make it more... Uh, annual bearing and um, these trees are not too bad but a little bit of spur removal is not a bad thing so let's look at another tree here okay the two biggest branches in the tree we'll take this one off using a bevel cut <coughs> and I'm gonna take this one off this is the number two big branch in the tree using a bevel cut so there's rule number one now these complex branches where they get very complex out at the end we're gonna do double duty we're going to singularize it. Um, we're also going to, as we're working here, do a little bit of spur pruning. You know, focus on the spurs that are underneath the branches. Um, we can get rid of some extra fruit this way. Uh, here's a branch that wise right out here. Um, we'll cut this one out. And maybe do a little more spur pruning. You know, they say up in Nova Scotia about half the spurs, approximately. Um, you know, especially if you're anticipating having a big crop. Here's a Y. We're going to cut this off. And uh, again, I like to kind of keep my tops singular here, especially if the tree has not reached its final height. So there we go. Tree number two. All right. Tree number three. One or two of the biggest branches in the tree. There's number one. Oh, let's do this one as number two. Seems it's low. Don't really want a branch coming out of there. Here's a Y. We have to make this branch singular, okay? Clean up the tip. A Y. A Y. Cut that out. Um, you know, I don't want my branches to get too big in the top of the tree, so this kind of cut works pretty good. All right, and I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of spur pruning like we talked about. This branch is broken, so this one has to come out. Oh, a little spur pruning here and there just to reduce the crop load on these a bit. Uh, clean up my top. And I think that's it. All right, we'll do one more tree here. The one or two biggest branches. This is the biggest one, so we'll cut this one out. This one's kind of low here, so I'm going to cut this one out. And it's big. It's done its job for a year or two. We're going to clean this up. Do a little spur pruning. There's some weeds in here. All right, a little spur pruning. Uh, this works good to uh, um, singularize what the, what's left here. And uh, I don't see too much spur pruning, but there's a little bit I can do here. Let's clean up the top. 
Don't forget I'm standing on about two feet of snow here, so even though this may only look to be six feet tall, it's actually close to seven and a half or eight feet. So there you go. Um, this is drooping a little bit. It's kind of spur pruning. That's kind of how we do a little spur pruning on these honey crisp and uh, prune the tall spindle. We'll do one more tree here. The biggest branch. Notice we're not doing any heading cuts. We're just doing out thinning cuts. A little bit of spur pruning. Singularize these. Let's see, we only took out one big branch. There's really, whoops, here's the second one right here, right in the top. That's a nice big one. A little spur pruning here and there. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, we'll get rid of a little bit of the extra fruit in here. And uh, we're done. And that's it. So uh, looking back at these tall spindle trees, they're easy to prune. And that's it for this year. So, John Clements for the UMass Video Fruit Advisor. We're looking at another big snowstorm for tomorrow, so I figured I better get out and, and do this for you today. Take it easy and uh, happy pruning. Enjoy the snow.